Hello, it works. Oh yes, I'm here. Um, Real-time cyber learning. This was a title I came up with before I'd really figured the rest out, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, then it was in the schedule already, so I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really want to change it, but cyber learning, real-time, with, with a little asterisk. Can you read that bit? Yeah, maybe more like 15 minutes sometimes. Get there. Um, who am I? I'm Jeremy. Um, I'm a security operations engineer at Venn, and um, in the past I've dabbled with uh, barcodes, broken barcodes, capacitive touch opening doors from the wrong side or the right side, uh, unsuccessful bug bounty hunting recently. Um, I managed to make a talk out of that, so <laughs> I don't know. Is that successful? I don't know. Um, how do you find out you've been hacked, right? This is a, a blog post on the Slack engineering blog I found quite cool. Um, maybe, an uh, maybe an employee notices something strange. You know, that's, that's, that's great, they notify you. Uh, maybe a third party vendor reports a bug. Bit embarrassing, um, you know, to have to answer them and go, oh yes, thank you very much. Uh, maybe a hacker submits a vulnerability. Um, and so it's a vulnerability that, and then you go back and have a look and oh yes, actually we were hacked. Um, or maybe you don't find out. And this is like in order of best case to worst case. Um, Maybe I've sort of given rough times here, but maybe this is like a day, you know, some production code co goes out, an employee notices something strange. Um, maybe a week a vendor notices a bug, that could be longer too, but sort of like maybe a hacker submits, that could be like a month, you know, or like you never find out. So what we want to be is we want to be in the top. You know, we want to be employees notice some, something strange uh, really fast. So all everywhere I always see, you know, watch your logs. Watch your logs, watch your logs, watch your logs. You know, watch your logs. Um, but the problem is with watching logs, it's really boring. You know, they're not doing anything. Um, there's lots of them. They're kind of brown looking and things. You know, so really, it's like no one ends up watching your logs. Uh, that's quite sad. But everybody watches a fire, <laughs> right? <laughs> is this going to work? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just can't stop watching that fire. This is the Slow Mo Guys, the YouTube channel. Um, so, so I had this brainwave, this idea. What if my new startup, logfire.io, still working at Venn, this is just on the side, right? Uh, logfire.io, you send us your logs, we set them on fire <laughs> so that you will then look at them. <laughs> it uses some incredible technologies. You know, it's a disruptive advanced machine learning neural network deep. <laughs> blockchain, it's got the blockchain in there. <laughs> Multi-region ledger data stores for logging. Um, so this is a method of procrastinating this talk, you know. <laughs> um, and I actually went ahead and implemented some of this. <laughs> so when you post your log to my API, there's only one endpoint. It just accepts logs. It actually adds it to a blockchain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mostly I did this because I found this naive chain implementation. It's JavaScript. It's 200 lines. Seemed perfect. Um, yeah, trust me with your logs. <laughs> um, and if you get on that endpoint, it just gives you the whole blockchain. So that's, those are the only two operations. Um, so I had the blockchain part. I was on my way to, uh, to instant success. Uh, but I needed to add the fire, right? Um, so maybe you post your log, it says 200 OK. You know, maybe you post another one, that's 200 OK. You know, everything is fine. Uh, hang on, 14 gone. Um, that just deleted the whole blockchain. Um, mostly because it's like an in-memory database and then you run out of memory eventually, so it just randomly deletes the blockchain and then you just, you're okay, right? <laughs> Hopefully the JavaScript garbage collector picks it up. We'll see. Um, sometimes it's a 451, unavailable for legal reasons. Um, this is basically the GDPR kicking in. Um, <laughs> so anytime there's a UK, Europe uh, <laughs> mentioned in your log line, it just doesn't accept it and it says unavailable. Um, there's also a 203, which is my favorite, and it also includes the JSON error message LP, LP0 on fire. So this is, the, this is my favorite uh, error message to return. I think it's 5% of the time you get this one. Um, printer on fire actually is, um, was in the, I don't know if it still is, in the Unix kernel as an event message for um, during a printing stall, occasionally during normal operation, the fusing oven would heat paper to combustion. This message does not reliably indicate whether or not the printer is actually on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so they decided to put this on fire message to motivate any system operator to immediately go and check on the printer. <laughs> they weren't really sure if it's on fire or not, but it might be. Right? <laughs> this was perfect. Right? So um, 
<laughs> That's a terrible idea, right? <laughs> People aren't going to check their logs because they're on fire. <laughs> um, what else could we do? Well, there's actually some real things that other people have written um, that do alerting. Um, so there's the Elastic have their product, um, Stream Alert, Argus, Elast Alert, there's a couple others. Um, we looked at we looked at a couple, but then I sort of looked more in depth at Stream Alert. And the reasons we liked it was it was serverless, um, scalable in AWS, so we were already using AWS for a lot of other things, so it kind of that kind of made sense. Rules written in Python, and I like Python. That's the only other <laughs> that's the only reason really. Terraform for infrastructure deployment. Um, so we're also using Terraform separately, so that was great, sort of aligns there too. Um, the input and output sources that they had ready to go, they also kind of matched what we were interested in, and it was open source, so it looked really cool. And roughly this is their their wow overview slide with icons from other companies. Uh, you take logs in, um, and they can either come in through Kinesis, S3, or an SNS topic. Um, they get processed through the weird streamlet squiggly, and then they go out to you know uh, Phantom, PagerDuty, Slack, um, S3, maybe other Lambda functions. So you've really got a whole lot of flexibility. Um, for example, you might want to be logging CloudTrail. So CloudTrail in AWS logs your API calls. Um, things you might want to look at are like a delete VPC event. Uh, maybe you stop logging the cloud trail. Maybe someone's using root credentials to sign into their account. Uh, maybe there's an IAM policy change that you're particularly interested in, or an insecure bucket goes out to the world. So there's a couple ways you can get these to your um, stream alert cluster, either through CloudWatch events or through the S3 bucket. So that's the round like 10 minutes version. Uh, CloudWatch events is great, like 10 seconds, but it, there's sort of some problems with regions there. So Regions are a nightmare. So we, we pop crowd, crowd trial at the front. We can either go through Kinesis or S3. And it kind of looks like this cloud trail in AWS. Uh, you basically click a few buttons and you enable it. Um, or you use Terraform that does this for you. But you do this first to try and play around. And then the CloudWatch part, it CloudWatch collects the logs from cloud trail and then lets you um, ingest them either with the Kinesis or um, via the SNS topics. Um, so they basically come out like this JSON message. And this, this JSON message is something's happened in AWS you might be interested in. Um, and you can search with this weird filter, which is kind of JSON, but not really. There's a dollar and a dot. I don't know why they did that. They should just use JSON, but maybe it's faster or something. Um, so yeah, this is, that, this is like an example log. Um, and it's a root sign-in, which is bad. Um, <laughs> So someone's used their root credentials. So how, what, how, do we, how do we alert on this? Well, happily, the AWS CIS Foundations Benchmark, this is a really great resource for getting started. Um, they have a whole bunch of default, of like, of like, I guess, foundational rules that you can use to, to scan your logs. And they explain how to filter in CloudWatch. So it's really nice. Um, and they also explain a little bit about why the rules are useful, but it's usually quite obvious as well. Um, so in that, um, PDF, there's like one of the things we're interested in is root account access. So they say, here's that filter pattern you might want to be using for root account access. Um, so if we apply that back to our JSON log that we captured, um, so you can see that this user identity is root. Um, there's a key missing for invoked by. Um, it's terrible, this schemaless schema. It's, it's very hard to work with sometimes. Um, and then it's making sure that this is a AWS, not an AWS service event. So the, other, the second two are um, AWS can assume your root credentials on your behalf to do a few things, um, which I'm not sure why you'd not want to alert on that, but anyway. So let's do this in StreamAlert. Um, it's kind of like the workflow that I've been doing for StreamAlert is to find a sample event like we just did. Um, you can write an integration test, and then with the expected outcome, the test fails, you choose an output to alert on, you describe your alert message, and then you write that logic. Test passes and deploy, happy, happy days. So luckily, actually, I didn't have to do any of that because Streamlet have some default rules already, and root account usage is one of them. So this is the entirety of a rule that you'd need to write, and it's a Python function that ends up in a Lambda. Um, so you've got a bit at the top that's kind of describing um, you know, what logs sources is coming from, uh, maybe what Slack channel or maybe what PagerDuty integration you want this to go to um, is a handy helper for required subkeys because of that tricky schema-less schema. schema. Um, and then the doc string 
is actually your description of the rule, but that becomes the message that gets alerted. Um, and then you implement that um, logic with Python, and you return true, it's going to alert, false, it's not going to alert. Um, so yeah, deploy that. It's uh, pretty, pretty easy to get going because I did it at the uh, morning tea break on my hotspot deployed to Terraform <laughs> just to make sure it still worked. Uh, so yeah, it's not too, not too bad. You can do it in about 30 minutes or so. <laughs> uh, but you can, yeah, you basically check out the repo, um, set up your config, and then you can deploy it. Um, so I'm just going to show you that quickly running. So we're in S3 here. Um, that root account usage, let's just do something. Let's just create a bucket. Um, So it's going to create a bucket. That's going to create one of those logs because I've mo oh, it's like an API call to AWS to create the bucket. Not everything's going to create CloudTrail logs. So if you're just browsing around, that's not going to create any logs. But it's, it's things that are going to action things in your AWS account. So, hey, in my Slack, we have the thumbs up emoji, stream alert triggered, root account usage. <laughs> and then it gives you, gives you the um, rule that triggered and then, some, and then the details. So this is, you get all of that output that was in the rule, um, but you have that description that came from the, um, maybe I can make this a bit bigger. Right, so there you go. Came through to my Slack channel. That wasn't me, that was all the StreamAlert guys. Um, really clever guys at Airbnb, and it's, um, it's, it's yeah, it works really well. Uh, this was in case the demo didn't work, smart sad face, but it did work, so happy days. Um, so other inputs that you can grab, um, OS query, um, Google Apps Admin, One Login, Duo. Uh, there's a bunch of others as well. You can add your own, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, this was a slide to explain the difficulties of cross region. I'm just going to skip over that because it's too much. And some outputs that you've got um, Slack, PagerDuty, um, Phantom, S3 buckets, maybe another Lambda function. So you can really go crazy here. And the output, to write your own output, is pretty simple. It's not that much. Um, so I, th I think the Slack integration is all of, I don't know, 100 lines or so. So it's pretty good. So at then, what, are we, what kind of things are we alerting on? Um, this is one of the rules I've written. So it's assuming a role. So we're using role-based um, role based IM um, roles to assume, assume roles that have permissions attached to the role. So we might have a really, really high, um, let's call it the administrator role. Um, and if someone assumes it, they can still assume it. They got the permission, but we might just want to know. And then we can perhaps message them and find out what are they doing with the super awesome privileges that you only really need to access uh, um, customer data, um, so we can just kind of follow up. So yeah, it's quite easy to write that. Um, I've kind of modified the description a bit to allow me to um, insert just Python formatting syntax, so that we can get a, a little bit, a little bit more info right in that message, make it like a really impactful statement. So user Tom Jerry has assumed administrator from this IP address, and then a bit of information, and then a link, maybe. It's not the security team that's looking at this, maybe it's someone who's on call. Um, they might know a little bit of help on what to do. Um, yeah, so a question I got asked while I was running this through a colleague at work was like, well, how do, how do you make sure that stream alerts, like who's monitoring stream alert? You know, what happens if you delete something there? Um, and they've thought about that and they use AWS's own sort of alerting thing, cl um, CloudWatch metrics. So you can set up separate metrics to alert you on things like errors or um, processing errors in stream alert or things like that. That so, so maybe someone's added a syntax error into your rule and it's just not running. Um, you might want to alert on that before you miss a really important alert. So coming back to um, LT0 on fire, and I was wondering how do I do this with, um, with stream alert, right? <laughs> So I was still thinking, there's this, this, this that chaos engineering from, the, from like Chaos Monkey and things. Maybe there's like a chaos security where there's an alert going on, you want to sort of s sometimes like, you know, in, in an important event, just test, test if everyone's still, still on their toes. Maybe we could add a Twitter output, you know, so <laughs> when you determine there's an open S3 bucket, it just posts to Twitter <laughs> so, so that people really quickly go and fix that. Um, no, that's a bad idea, don't do that. Um, 
actually using Chaos Monkey, so you could maybe trigger some Chaos Monkeys. Chaos Monkey um, go and t like destroy uh, EC2 instances and a whole bunch of other things um, as part of the Chaos Engineering um, at Netflix. So they um, basically trying to make your code more resilient. But maybe you, you don't use Chaos Monkey and you just add it in here and just start just start destroying things whenever something important has happened on your network, like someone's got root account access, and suddenly other things are starting to happen. <laughs> no, I don't do that either. Um, so one of the things I was thinking of is balloons. Balloons reduce stress, right? So an important important incident happens, you need to maintain calm. Um, so I added added my own um, Slack output, my own output type uh, called balloon. Uh, let's, let's see if I can switch to it. So, for example, here, critical critical API calls. It's going to go to our security alerts Slack, but it's also going to go to balloon Slack. Uh, so, hopefully, this all works because it almost didn't. So, <laughs> I should I should explain. Have I got a Have we got a um, down shot of this? Oh, yeah. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> I bought an air compressor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a problem, I think, with this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I went to, I, went, I bought a, this is like a smart plug. Um, bought it at PB Tech, not really knowing what I could do with it at the time. I had to like looking at it. It's really odd in the shop when you have to decide, like, can I hack this for what I need it to do? <laughs> like, it's going to come with some crappy app, and it's going to have some cloud-based thing, and maybe it's like, if then, then that. It's still, I don't want to do that. Like, <laughs> hmm, how bad is this? And that, is that good, right? <laughs> so I managed to pick this one up for $50. And luckily, two guys um, had already reverse engineered the protocol, and they did actually use XOR encryption. Well, oh, sorry, XOR, whatever XOR is, right? <laughs> uh, an XOR cipher to encrypt from your phone to the device on first setup, which is just absolutely terrible. But it meant that there was a Python script available <laughs> to control this device. I didn't even have to install the Android app. It was just, just great. Um, so that controls this. That controls the air compressor. And then we've got this balloon. So, is it going to work? Let's see. Um, yeah, if we got back to the slides. So let's do some critical API call. Uh, we could delete a trail. So let's go jump over to cloud trail. I think actually it's going to trigger on the root account usage as well. So we might see some uh, some goodness happening here. So let's go trails, let's create a trail. Uh, like even this creation of the trail is going to trigger it actually. Because it's a, it's a um, I'm using my root credential to do this. <laughs> I was doing this in the last few minutes before the talk. Don't judge me. Uh, why isn't this letting me create a trail? Hey, it's created it. So let's see if we're going to get an alert on that. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> what is it doing? It was only supposed to go once. <laughs> what happened? Oh, there's many posts to inflate. Maybe they created multiple, oh, maybe it's creating the bucket, creating the cloud trail, creating like the cloud watch event group. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so let's go and do some more things. <laughs> so you can imagine you're working away and that thing like it goes <laughs> off, right? Let's create, let's create a new bucket. Terrible bucket, bucket insecure because you guessed it, it's going to be read only. I mean, read wide to everybody. Hey, it's going to be read, world, read wide from the world. Create bucket. It's going to work. It's about 10 seconds to go through that CloudWatch. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought the smiley face would like help calm things. 
Also, it was like the only one at my party store that looked really good. It was like that and a pirate ship. Uh, it was hard to choose. <laughs> so here's all these extra alerts that have come through. Um, so we had a CloudTrail put bucket, uh, root account usage, more root account usage. Basically, I'm using root account so that it's just going to go, keep going off for entertainment's sake. Um, what can we do that creates a lot of things? Um, maybe, we can cr maybe we can create a bucket from the command line. Uh, let's, delete, let's delete this bucket. Uh, a terrible insecure bucket. You've got to understand how amazing this is that this demo is working. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm relying on a crappy IoT device <laughs> that uses XOR to do this from my laptop, which is in US East 1, and it's doing like the stream alert thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We've got we to go faster. Uh, let's, just, let's just go. Create more buckets. <laughs> That's fine. Are you always amazed that like, you do that and sometimes it's not unique? You're like, hmm, who are you? <laughs> oh, more. We need more. And you know what we could do? We could just up the time that it's on for as well. You've got to appreciate this. Um, oh, that's, oh, this is my terrible idea. Hang on, that's not that one. You've got to appreciate how amazing this encryption is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go for gold. 20. <laughs> do you guys get nervous with balloons that keep inflating? <laughs> uh, let's make sure I restart the right thing. Oh, no. The valid syntax. I don't see. I don't see anything wrong with that. Where? There was. One one five. Ah, oh, there it is. It was red. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go more. What else can we do? Let's go and. Uh, it starts slowly deflating as well. And this thing gets hot too, so I thought if I'd put it a little bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> what else have we got? Uh, let's create a Lambda function. I could actually do some critical API calls, but then it might stop the demo. Oh, I know what we could do. We can delete that trail that we created. That's why I created it. Because um, that'll delete a whole bunch of things as well. Uh, Trails. Bad trail. Oh no. Oh no. What have I, I haven't even done it yet. <laughs> it's going to go for 20 seconds. What was it? I don't know. <laughs> I can't think with all this balloon going on. <laughs> oh, phew. Wow. <laughs> Is this making anyone else uncomfortable? <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, now we can delete it. Turns out I chose that 20 seconds just great. I only tested this once because I had to hold it while I was testing it. Uh, that, was, that was intense. It takes one minute with this crappy compressor. Hey, I deleted it now. It should be 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. This is from the tool shop. Come on. <laughs> wow. Thanks. 